So good morning everyone and welcome to the latest Eris Innovator demo series. Today I'm joined by the birthday girl Lisa Costa, our community technical manager. Woohoo! <laughs> we will be giving you a quick run through of the Eris quality management system and we'll be focusing on the quality systems portion. Just a quick uh, little bit about the demo series. We're going to do 30 minutes all demo. We're not going to bother you with sales pitch today. Each month we feature a different capability of Aris Innovator to try and get you a good view over the a little bit of time to see everything. And if you'd like more information on previous demos or what's coming, you can go to aris.com slash demo series and all that information is provided there. Quick run through of what we're going to show you today. We're going to talk about how the quality systems package allows you to capture quality events and then contain those. So that the ability to contain and then perform analysis. The whole idea of a closed loop kappa, the corrective action and preventive action, the ability to, to make sure that as you're capturing those things, you're circling back, making sure everything is taken care of. Uh, a little bit about reporting. Uh, we've got some, some built-in reports to be able to show you there. And how everything that you see is going to be built on top of all of the ARIS PLM core functionality. So you're not seeing anything that's, that isn't available from the other capabilities. And so with that, we, uh, we're going to go ahead and give you an idea of what the different aspects are. So the corrective action plan is the top level item and that connects to quality events that, that I mentioned. And you might have audit findings or non-conformance reports or problem reports that you're going to capture. So that, that says we, we had a problem with the product on the shop floor kind of thing. Uh, containment. What am I going to do to manage this? I, I may put something on hold. I may want to purge my stock. Or I might have a stop ship. Hey, this is a really big problem. We need to not send this product to a customer. Uh, root cause analysis is one of the, the cornerstones of the quality system tool to be able to dig in and find out what the problems are. Corrective action uh, capability is, is finding those deviations, rework orders, and, and waivers. And then on the preventive side, putting together documents that are going to note everything, uh, engineering change orders to put changes in place to fix whatever the problems might have been. It could have been in the manufacturing process. It could have been in the, the design process. And also, you might be updating your quality documents that were generated from the quality planning phase, your design FMEA or your process FMEA. So that's another part of what we talk about with closed loop. So uh, that was a very quick run through. But I uh, wanted to get you right over the demo, so we'll let Lisa take over. Thank you, Dave. All right. So as we mentioned, so the quality items for quality systems, there's two aspects to quality with the QMS system. There's the proactive and the reactive. And the closed loop is to come back around whenever you have a quality issue uh, to close the loop back to the proactive quality so it doesn't happen again. So that's what we're going to take a look at quick today. So in the quality, so just to let you know, the items, again, they're going to look like any other items in Aris Innovator, as we've seen before. So you have the ability to search for individual items. Like if I needed to only find all the audits that are currently in place, I would be able to do that. If I needed to go see all the deviations we currently have going, I could do that and see what state they're in. Almost all of the quality items have workflow associated with them, which I'll t we'll take a look at a few and just show you that you know, the out of the box as you download behavior, there's certain uh, inherent workflows and life cycles. If they don't match your particular quality workflows, approvals, players, if you will, you'd be able to configure that just like you could any other item in Aris Innovator. So we're gonna do two things first. We're gonna take a look at an existing uh, corrective action plan, and then we're gonna actually make one from scratch if we have time, which I'm sure we probably will since I talk really fast. So <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> All right. So so again, just real quick. So the every item has workflow with the exception of the a cause, the, the actual action plan we're looking at here in audit findings. Everything else is going to have workflow um, so that there are going to be things showing up in your in basket, which I'll show you as well. But this is a corrective action plan. So as we saw from the slide that Dave presented, the corrective action plan is kind of the umbrella item type, which brings together all the things happening with a particular quality plan, which includes, the plan includes the things that made us have a plan, which are the events, then what we're doing to contain it, the analysis, corrective actions, and preventative actions. Just to point out real quick the things that we're leveraging here, same thing as we've seen with other demos. If you've been lucky enough to sit in on one that includes item types that have visual collaboration associated with them, I do have the ability to 
view the items that are related, uh, the document. So this document happens to be the actual five whys document that's on the analysis item type. So again, with the visual collaboration, it's on the actual analysis item type, but I don't have to navigate down to it to be able to quickly visualize that. And again, I also have the ability to see that there's a image that's related to the non-conformance, right? So we had a problem with a fan, somebody took a picture with their tablet, with their phone, whatever the case may be, and that's actually linked to the root cause analysis item. So as we look at the corrective action plan itself, you can see here again, there are events that happened. The PR is the same PR that's used um, with the PE, the product engineering, um, CM2 problem report. So this is no different than a problem report that you would see um, in, other, in anywhere else in Ares Innovator. So there's a problem. The problem report form itself is pretty um, elaborate from a standpoint of radio buttons, everything associated with that. You've got the affected item itself. Somebody reported a problem. Something was happening. The customer's reporting problems in the field with overheating. And somebody actually initiated an ECO. But again, that's the problem report. So there, you can see here there was two quality events that actually initiated this particular corrective action plan. There was a non-conformist, there was a buckling on the extruder fan material, and then there's also a problem report reported from customers themselves. Now again, you can dive down into each one. Again, they all have their individual workflows. So if we looked at the non-conformance and we viewed it the, the workflow itself, you would see that the non-conformance is moving through a workflow you know, where it currently is. You could see who signed off on it so far to get it where it is. And you can see here that it went from Mike Miller to Terry Adams and any comments that they made. Again, this is the same workflow engine that you're gonna get. Just we made some assumptions on what NCRs might look like for a workflow and it's 100% configurable. If you're saying to yourself, she's a mad woman, we'd never do a workflow like that for non-conformance. So again, to, I'm gonna lock this corrective action plan actually and show you that Obviously, just like with any other behavior there, Innovator, there's an ability to relate this um, corrective action plan. Again, we made the assumption that the three types of events that might result in a corrective action plan being initiated are non-conformance reports, audit findings, and problem reports, right? So if you actually want to link an audit finding um, and Put it uh, actually make it part of this corrective action plan it's just as simple as saying I want to create either create new or select an existing uh, audit finding and add it to this corrective action plan if I look at the containment items again the assumption we've made which is totally up to you to use or not is that there's purge notices ship notices and if you looked here the additional item type is a hold notice that could be on there again the containment from a standpoint of a quality issue is what do we immediately have to do to stop this particular quality problem from getting bigger or you know, stopping its tracks, whatever the case may be. Analysis, so the analysis, there's three that we assume that people are gonna wanna do. Again, assumptions uh, you know, that there can be fishbone analysis, but they've all got a root cause. There can be a fishbone analysis there as far as the documentation of the analysis is fishbone. We also have five whys as well as a fault tree, and I can show you those as well. Let's dive into the root cause analysis real quick. So when I look at the analysis itself, as I mentioned before, there can be a document associated with it, right? So there's an actual, this case there is a the five whys. We already saw this five whys before. There's a five whys document, but then there's also the actual cause item itself. So this is the actual cause. So there's the analysis, then there's the actual cause item type. This cause item type is gonna allow us to link back. These are the same causes that show up in our design quality documents. So it shows up in the design quality documents as well as the process quality documents. The things that Dave is referring to, the FMEAs, right? So since they're linked, it's the ability to say that, yep, this was the cause, this was the analysis, and then when we make um, our, when we link it back to the original design quality document for this particular affected item, or when we, just in general, as this is a cause we found before, so we might want to look out for it in the future, they are linked to get you that closed loop. And again, we'll see more about that. Corrective actions, as we mentioned before, this one's got a deviation. Your other options are rework orders and waivers. 
you know, not to belabor the point, all of these items have their own forms, right? Nothing um, earth shattering here. They all have their own forms. They are all linked to affected items. They also, those affected items have their own documents associated with them. And again, all of these have both life cycle, right? What current state it's in, right? It's in the in-work state. And then also, um, they also have their own workflows that they're working through, okay? All right, so, so far this corrective action plan itself has events that initiated it, containment things that we did to, con to make sure it's not gonna keep going, an analysis to find out what the root cause was, which uh, has been established, and then the corrective actions we're gonna do um, to make sure that this doesn't happen in the future, and then preventive actions, you know, for that, the corrective actions for that plan, and then there's the preventative actions for pretty much across the board, <laughs> right? So, from a quality perspective, what are the types of things we need to take into account so that this particular issue does not crop up again, either in this product and future revisions of this product or in other products as well that are similar and might have a, a, a similar quality issue come up. As you can see here, there is a design quality document associated here. And then if we took a look at that, that is a, a link back to, if you look at the preventative action, the design quality document is that design FMEA, people call it, um, the Failure Modes, Effects, and Analysis Report. And as I mentioned before, the causes linked here, right, are the same causes that we saw previously, right? So if the cause that we established for this CAP uh, Corrective Action Plan is not currently in this document, what we would be able to do is to uh, actually add it, right? So we'd be able to come in here and say, you know, there's another, there's, um, there's a heat problem. So we come in here and we say we want to actually add a cause. So instead of just making a new cause, we actually say it's from a reference. And I can go over here and select. And if you remembered, these were the causes that were in uh, linked to that root cause analysis. So if I pick cause 108, so this little blue dot here, so as I save this item and unlock it, you'll see that, that that particular indicator is gonna be the fact that it's referencing a cause, right? So this is not just text typed in, this is actually referencing the cause itself. And we'll come back to that as well. It gives me my closed loop. And then again, um, because we actually had released product uh, and a customer found this issue, there's actually an ECO that we've got initiated that's gonna fix this issue. So. Revision A of our product actually had this issue, but we're going to not have this issue anymore. Once this particular ECO is released, it's going to fix the problems. The fix that we came up for this particular problem is that we are um, getting rid of one fan, replacing it with a different kind of fan. And I need to move my GoToMeeting thing because it's in my way. All right, so we have, um, we're going to revise that extruder assembly, if you remember, that we visualized earlier. That extruder assembly is going to go to revision B. We're going to get rid of a fan, get rid of a thermocouple, and add the new fan to it. And oh, by the way, the CAD documents also are updated to match the change that's happening here. So again, that's an existing corrective action plan. That's what it looks like to have a plan in total uh, that links all of these items together. Um, do you have to have all of them? I'd say probably not. Maybe sometimes you know it's, there is no. Sometimes there's a, an issue or a problem that doesn't result in an entire corrective action plan. It would depend on your business process of what things require your plan, which ones require analysis, containment. I mean, every every quality issue is different, and you would deal with them um, as such, right? Okay, so in our case, let's start one from scratch. So I'm actually going to come in. So there is a quality event. So I'm going to take my, um, my quality event item and I have a non-conformance, right? So I have this non-conformance and I want to actually, so much like, first of all, let's go take a look at the non-conformance itself. So you can see here again, there's an image associated with it. This particular is that uh, we have a cover option for our 3D printer and somebody has had some quality issues with the actual material itself. Again, we have CAD documents associated you know, that are part of the design of this particular cover. And then we also have the image attached that is what somebody took a photo of the problem that we're having. So the action itself, there's a couple ways to get to it, just like with any other action. You can see here, there's an ability to add this action. So this is the, 
there's a nonconformance. We've decided that this nonconformance rises to the level to have a corrective action plan associated with it. So all we do here is say I want to uh, create a corrective action plan. Now, if this actual nonconformance, if I'd already made the plan, so order is not important, just like with change items. Um, if you already made a corrective action plan, you could attach it to an existing, but in my case, I'm going to create a new corrective action plan. So I'm going to enter my cap number and we'll use that. So again, it's got a form to fill out. As, you, know, you fill out as much as you need to for the particular problem at hand. In my case, you guys aren't going to have to sit there and watch me type. It's quite boring. Take my word for it. <laughs> but the action itself, again, automatically attach that nonconformance. So you can see here we have the nonconformance attached to the corrective action. And then this would just really start the whole uh, quality process off. And we'd be able to go through and attach our containment items as well as our analysis, corrective action plan, preventative action. Since I've kind of already gone through what all that looks like with the first one, I'm actually going to skip for a second. If we have enough time, I'll come back and complete this one. It's more of the same you saw me before. You're either going to select existing items and attach them to this corrective action plan, and they're all going to have their own workflows, or you um, create new ones, right? Those are your options, right, if they don't already exist. But right now, I want to make sure you understand the workflow aspect to all these items. So I'm logged in as Mike Miller, as I mentioned. With, with the exception of three of those item types, they all have workflows associated with them. So here you can see um, when we were looking at our Kappa 001, it has all these quality issues um, there with the containment, not issues, there's issues, events, quality. But you can see here, this is what all these different workflows look like to the user, right? So when Mike Miller logs in today, maybe he was out sick yesterday so he's a day behind on some of these maybe a couple days behind but hey who isn't right <laughs> so we can walk through it so each one of these workflow items you can see here that you're you know basically that he's being asked to review that deviation he's supposed to check the deviation for completeness and then vote in the workflow so we'll just take a quick look at what that looks like again anytime a deviation rework order all of them are going to be similar they all have their own form as we saw before they have their own workflow they're working through and this at this point in time i'm supposed to verify that this form is complete and we've done everything we need to do so i'm going to say yes we understand what the fan is doing all that is acceptable so i want to approve this particular deviation so i'll go through and say yes i've looked at it and i'm going to approve it again my options are to approve reject rework or delegate right so again just in case we forget what that workflow looks like um, the deviation workflow again this is why i have those options my options are to approve that the deviation what we've planned to do is correct reject it and say no dice or rework it maybe somebody it's not complete and somebody needs to rethink the way we're going to fix this for in my case i'm going to say it looks good as a plan and say complete so as part of that um, um, all right our in basket is a dynamic in basket so that particular deviation is approved and goes off um, in this case because it's approved it's complete and it's still attached to that corrective action plan one more thing before we go on to um, um, you know finish out the one that we started from scratch is that there's also reporting available again if you've seen any demo of Aris Innovator there is a reporting engine both for administrators as well as users called self-service reporting. Um, with the quality system, when you apply the application, uh, you'll get you know, uh, out of the box two reports. Um, one is the 8D report. So you can see here what this is doing is it's taking the item types that we've been looking at here for the past 20 minutes or so. Uh, it's taking all of those and putting it into a report so that you have the ability to translate, print this report and make it available to people. It's really just gathering everything that we've seen from the from the standpoint of interactively being able to look at inside of Aris Innovator into a report. Um, the other report that we have out of the box is the ability to just quickly look at all of the corrective action plans currently in process, how many are closed, how many are due, and how many are canceled. So again, those are based on the, um, the life cycle of the, of the corrective action plans that we have in-house. So 
the total number is five. If you're lucky enough in a company to only have five corrective action plans, yeah. you're doing pretty good. Um, world again, class. <laughs> world class, yeah, <laughs> six sigma. <laughs> but anyway, so so that's really um, the reporting. But again, from a reporting standpoint, if you wanted to make a new report. And the reporting, I'm sure you've seen self-service reporting. It's a, a corrective action plan would be like any other item type you want to report on, meaning that if Mike Miller has ac access to corrective action plans, he has the ability to report. So if those reports aren't sufficient for you and you wanted to see a different kind of report for corrective action plans, you could do that. And we could um, go through and create our own report if we wanted to and, and grab any of the properties that we saw so if you look at the properties on a corrective action, you get the cap number, the problem description, severity. Maybe you want to do a report on severities. Um, and then also you want to go down to the analysis item and see what type of analysis was done and the description of it. And add that to the report. And um, problem description, severity. And again, these are just a, this is just a, again, if the rep reports we don't ship with aren't to your liking, Users can make their own, right? Um, or, you know, administrators can create new reports if you want to take a look at that, okay? All right, so, so far we've covered, we've talked a little bit about each of the different item types. We created a new corrective action plan. We've looked at the types of reporting that we make available out of the box. Um, the last thing I'll do is, if you remember back to the cause, remember this low performance fan used? Um, this particular cause is in two places, right? It's first of all, it's linked to the root cause analysis that we did, as well as it's linked to our um, design quality document. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to edit that and low performance. All right, so all I did was make a change to that. So what I want to show you is a couple things. If I come back to this design quality document that we saw before, what we'll see is with that change, so what it does is, you'll see, remember that was um, blue before? Now the reason is because it was this design quality document is referencing that cause. That cause is now changed, right? I modified the contents of that cause, I modified the description, I now have the ability to lock this, and, and then it, I have the choices that I can make when it comes to the, ref it says the reference value doesn't match, right? So if you want, I can go in here, I can ignore that and just keep the design quality document the way it is, or I can choose to update the document, right? So when I update the document, you can see that we now have that change. Um, one last thing I wanna point out is that the, um, the different, uh, the, we saw an example of the five Ys, like I said before, we also have fishbone and we have a fault tree. Uh, they do work with the office connector so what I mean by that is if I did have for that cap that we created together, I do have an analysis I wanted to create from scratch, I can say I want to make a new 5 Ys quality um, analysis document and it actually, I have a template for that so everybody doesn't have to create it from scratch, which is always a good thing I find. And I say I want to attach it to a particular corrective action plan, we'll go find the one that I made and say this is my... Um, my five Ys for cover material issue. Say okay. Okay, so uh, I'm not a quality person, so I don't know what the five Ys, how they go. They probably like a child because, because, because. <laughs> <laughs> so cover material failure. Okay, why it broke. <laughs> why, oops, I want that one. Why number two, it was bad material. All right, so you can see you could go through this. Again, I'm not gonna bore you with my typing, but getting back to the connection with Ares Innovator. So this did, this was, I was inside Word. From inside Word, I initiated a new 5Ys document, which is a quality type analysis. I'm going to save and close. It's created a new document. And when we go back to our, um, when we go back to the corrective action that we made together earlier, right? So if we took a look at um, the corrective action we had together earlier, 
Now we go to the Analysis tab, we have the Root Cause Analysis there, and we also have the ability to visualize that document that I made. Okay? So. Very comprehensive five wise, Lisa. I know. I'm very deep. <laughs> I'm not deep. <laughs> I'm the anti-quality user, no. So anyway, so that's, again, we're at 26 minutes, so like it, it's, we've looked at all the different item types, and again, total solution for doing the corrective action uh, plan, bringing it back in and linking it to the proactive items like an ECO design quality document, um, being able to utilize, as, as Dave said, the core functionality of if you already know how to use lifecycle workflow and the office connector, great news! It all works with the quality mm -hmm. application as well. Slides. And going back, thank you very much. Just a quick talk through on a couple of the benefits that you could draw from that is, you know, if you're looking to, to move quality functions that are disconnected, you've got the team that's, that isn't really connected with your manufacturing design teams and you're seeing a lot of problems that you're, you're trying to improve your, your business's quality, this is something that, that can help address. Um, capturing escapes, you've got things that are getting out, things that are happening. Um, now with this closed loop, I can get back and improve my product design and my, my manufacturing processes because we're all integrated. It's not that I have to do something in a separate paper process. Um, regulatory compliance is a big deal for a lot of firms. So now you've got all of that together inside of a configure, configuration managed system. So all of your product data, your CAD, your documents that are associated with it, your bill of materials, your manufacturing, your, your process plans, and all the quality data and documents that you just saw today are all configuration managed together. Um, so with that, I think we'll, I got a few questions here. I'll try and answer those uh, pretty quick. Um, Lisa, there's a question here about, um, sometimes you don't always have one cause, which uh, makes oh, sense. Yeah. Um, can you attach multiple causes for an issue? Absolutely, yep, yep. There's no, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, it's a one-to-many. Right. So I think it would just be you would, the the form you would just create multiple relationships effectively. Yep, yep. So, question here about how are quality issues reported to your system? Well, the, the, this we we talked about nonconformance reports. Yeah, um, the events. Yeah, yeah the, that would the be events. the events, right? Problem reports, um, nonconformance reports, audit findings mm -hmm. are the ones. Again, those are the out of the box. But if you have different things that would are different, if you call them something different, or you want to have different quality events, there's nothing to stop you from making other item types. Yep. Right, so typically your, your quality folks, uh, they would have access to the system that, that they can author those yep. reports either through the client that you saw today or if, if, if through, through our, uh, our tablet clients for iOS or Android or what have you. Um, let's see, great demo, thank you. We like to hear okay, that. You go. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> um, a little suggestion, a graphical overview. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. We, we actually have kind of a, we call it a, a, a map that, that shows how all of the, the, the different pieces kind of put together. We'll, uh, we'll try to get something out for you guys to help you out with that. Are forms customizable? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Everything in Eris Innovator is customizable from the data model to the forms, uh, to the reports. Um, that way it fits your business process. We're, we're not smart enough to know your process and we wouldn't uh, try to tell you how to do things. We wouldn't presume to tell you yeah, how to we run your presume. business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you modify the 8D template to include much more details? Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I've, I grew up in the manufacturing uh, realm at General Electric and BE Aerospace, so yeah, I, I, I had much more comprehensive 8Ds. But this, the intent there is we, we gave you a report to get you started and that way you can make it fit your process instead of having if we built a giant report that you said hey half of this doesn't work i need it simpler we we try to take the simple get you enough idea that you can then run with it and make it fit how you do business a follow-up question can a user do the customization or does eris need to do it for their customers um, you can download this free right now uh, the the quality management system is is part of our open source capability, you can have it set up and modified in a couple hours. Um, but you can certainly work with Eris or our partners uh, if, if you wanted consulting help to help you build things out. So it, it's sort of a, what makes the most sense for your, your business. Um, that's why we do a lot of these demo series to help you sh to see how things work. Uh, we do have a few videos out there on how to customize 
Um, and it would be the same, yeah. So, right. I mean, they're just another item type. So the same way you would, if you went back to one of our demo series about modifying the system, the way yep. you modify forms, workflows, life cycles, it's all the same. There's no magic right. in the quality. There's no for magic. The names of the items. That's right. <laughs> um, one thing I did want to mention was um, you can also join our community, community.aris.com, so that you can you know post questions to each other and the Aris team to, to help. Uh, find cool solutions and connect with customers that have already done some things. No, no reason to reinvent the wheel. Um, what's included out of the box? Uh, out of the box is the Aris Innovator platform, so all the basic workflow capabilities, life cycle. Um, those are all the service capabilities, the, the ideas of everything's an item. Um, and then the, you get two applications bundled with that out of the box, and that is the project management, which is, uh, you might think of that as like Gantt chart type things for managing projects and also what we call product engineering. And that includes all configuration management uh, capabilities, including your bill of material, uh, all those relationships, the, the necessary items, parts, documents, CAD documents, as well as all the change features. Um, and you do get QML, you get the quality. Yeah, that's the quality, not, yeah, you, it's not out of the box. You need to add that as a secondary installation. But to, it's, yeah, but, but it, it is available, freely available. Right. And everything is built on the same platform, so it's not like you're bolting on another application. Everything is built on Aris Innovator. Yep. That way you know for sure that everything is going to integrate just as if you installed everything at one time. Yeah, and the only things I showed today that you wouldn't get in the out of the box, uh, the downloadable free version is the visual collaboration stuff and the self-service reporting, right? right? Those would be subscriber benefits. Right. Um, let's see. Um, configurable or customizable? Uh, great question. Actually, at Aris, we call it all modeling. Uh, you can look at some of our, our model-based uh, discussions uh, because we, we try to not differentiate because we know customizable can be a scary word, but we realize um, that it, it's a necessary thing. But um, the way we customize things, it's much faster, much easier, and uh, hopefully uh, you, you can see some of that and root out what you need. Uh, but the important thing is, is no matter how much you modify, customize, uh, or, or model, everything is guaranteed upgradable. So when you're a subscriber, uh, the Aris team actually does your upgrades for you, so we guarantee that you'll get to the next version. Is there an available mobile app connected so that, yes, so that we have applications on for the Windows platform, uh, so if you're using a Windows tablet, uh, Android and iOS. So we, we call those Aris Flow. They're freely available. You just have to point those to your Aris server, and um, you have the ability to interact with changes, um, go through and do the approvals that we saw today. We, we have some videos on those also. We did some, a demo series, uh, I want to say last fall, where we actually had all of them running at the same time, and we tried to make a story. Um, yeah, and those quali because those quality yep. items mm -hmm. I use today use yes. the workflow, they would show up in the end basket. Yeah, actually, yep. the PR comes from the out-of-the-box yep. uh, configuration management yep. that, that, that is in PE. So the QMS package is actually using PR from another what we call application. Yep. Uh, can you rename? Absolutely. Uh, that's part of modeling it to fit your system. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't uh, suggest you use all of our names. We're uh, protect the innocent. It protected. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're at eleven thirty-five, five, five right. minutes over. But I think we had a, a good bit of conversation there. Um, just the uh, the last bits. You can always email me if you have any questions. Uh, it's duing at aris .com. And next month, well, actually, it's in a, in a couple of weeks. We have another. It'll be kind of fun. Uh, it's talking about our community projects. So definitely go out to community.aris.com and check out our community and all of our community projects are free freely available they're contributed by the community or Aris folks and we're going to be showing how to customize the look and feel of your Aris form so if you want to change the layout make them look a lot prettier uh, and there's a community project that's freely available so we're going to be talking about how to do that did you call my forms ugly no, 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 not, not really at all. But, but hey, some people like them to look a certain way. Um, I, we, I'm just teasing. So uh, with that, we will call it a day. And uh, we thank you for joining. And this, everything will be online. And you'll get an email from us as soon as everything's ready.